Hi everyone, I am Sindhu from Informatica Global Customer Support. This video is on how to configure client machine to connect to Kerberized Hive. Agenda of the video is as follows. How to create Hive connection to Kerberized Hive, configure KRB 5.ini, creating Kerberos ticket cache file for authentication, updating the HiveSite.xml and finally how to import the Hive table. Creating Hive connection to Kerberized Hive. Hive connection back can be created either from Informatica Administrator Console or from the developer client. The syntax of the JDBC connection is as specified. The configuration parameter principle is to identify the principal name of the Hive user, which is the service principal name for the Hive user in the Kerberos distribution center. Configuring KRB 5.ini. In order to enable authentication between the client and the Kerberos server, client should be able to identify the realm to which user belongs. Update the KRB 5.ini with the realm name and details of the Kerberos distribution server to which Hive server belongs. If KRB 5.ini is not present, please copy KRB 5.conf from Linux server to Windows machine and rename it to Kerberos 5.ini. Set Kerberos 5 underscore config as system environment variable and point it to the location of INI file. Creating Kerberos ticket cache file. To generate ticket cache file, you need to have required user's key tab on the client machine. As per Kerberos authentication, ticket cache file is the authentication token used for the authentication between client and the server. Run K in it as shown to generate the ticket cache file. There are two important things that needs to be taken care of while generating the cache file. First, K init should run using the client Java location as generating with a different version of Java would hamper the authentication process. Second, K init command needs to be run with hyphen F option if the forwardable parameter under krb5.ini is set to true. Hivesite.xml configurations. Update the hivesite.xml under the client Hadoop distribution directory to add all the configuration properties related to Kerberos authentication, including the values for SPNs and key tabs. Add the property Hadoop security Kerberos ticket cache path and point it to the location of ticket cache file so generated using the knet command. As specified in the presentation, first step is to create the Hive connection. Hive user should include the Hive principal name along with the Hive along with the Hive server host name and the realm name. The JDBC connection should have the principal as the configuration parameter with the Hive server service principal name. Once this is done, the KRB file should be updated with the name of the realm along with the Kerberos dist distribution server values. Here you can see KRB file is updated with the default realm and you, can, you should also observe that the forwardable parameter is set to true. Once this is done, you need to update the hivesite.xml with the key tab values and the service principal names, along with the ticket cache file location once it is generated. You can observe that the knit file is being generated using clients java. Once knit is run, the ticket cache file will be generated and the path will be specified as a command output. This path needs to be updated in the hivesite.xml. Once ticket cache file is generated, you can run or relaunch the developer client and then test the Hive connection. Once the connection is successful, you can try importing the Hive table. If there are any issues while generating the ticket cache file, the authentication process will fail with GSS initiate errors. Now you can see you have successfully imported a Hive table from the Kerberized Hive server too. For further steps, you can refer to Informatica Big Data Edition User Guide and Installation and Configuration Guide. We would love to hear from you. Thank you in advance for your feedbacks.